Good evening, campers. Have we got a good book today? Have we? Have we? Oh, oh. <laughs> let's save it till the end. Let's, let's do. Let's big this up. Let's big this up, okay, people. We're going to talk about Maaza Mengistas, The Shadow King. This book. Okay, okay. When I did my video discussing every long listed book and my initial reactions, I was so excited for The Shadow King. I was so, so excited for The Shadow King. This story discusses the 1935 Italian invasion of Ethiopia and how these Ethiopian women want to help fight for their country when their leader, the Emperor Haile Selassie, abandons them. The main character of the Shadow King is her root, and in 1974, when we start this story, she is sat on a train station holding together a suitcase of letters and photographs. She is going to meet one of the Italian commanders, it seems. For what reason? we're unsure of. After this short glimpse, we go back to 1935, where her route has become a maid under Kidane and Asta, where her rifle, her family relic, the Wajura, a rifle, has been taken from her. Her father's cape has been taken from her, and she is stripped down of all status. Upon hearing of the tumultuous tundra that is war heading closer to Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia, Hirut wants to fight and she will place her life on the line for her country, for her people, for her heritage, for what it is for her to be a person of Ethiopia. I feel as though I'm stating the obvious, but Ethiopia is a very male-centric society, and her route is really grappling with Kidane, an officer to Haile Selassie, who wants to build his own army to fight the war that is inevitably going to happen. But Kidane, holding the title of Deja Mash, feels as though he should be the one propelling the war, giving the orders, executing decisions, and ultimately winning the war on behalf of everyone else. And within 400 and... And within the 400 pages of this novel, Marza Minkis is able to really give us a full scope, a full cinematic viewing of all the perspectives of the people within this novel. Not only do we have her roots viewpoint, just like a Greek play, we have interludes where we visit Haley Selassie in his private rooms, trying to understand how he is going to win a war, which he believes they will ultimately lose. We have an ongoing chorus of those quick and fast who strengthen, who channel themselves to make Herut the unbreakable warrior that she was always destined to become. However, Mengista would not be fully satisfied giving you a wholly Ethiopian perspective. We have breaks, we have glimpses into some of the Italian officers, those on the other side. And one character in particular is Ettore, the photographer. And while he's documenting this war, while he's viewing the bloodshed, the carnage, the war crimes, the ambushes, He's also aware that Mussolini, the leader of Italy, is getting closer and closer to aligning himself with Hitler. And you could feel the beads of sweat gather on his brow and the nape of his neck because he's Jewish. So whilst he's fighting a war, he knows that one is slowly but assuredly coming for him. The photographs that Ettore took take a real prominent place in this novel as we have not the images themselves but descriptions of them. And I really would have just loved a photograph. Okay, this is where it's turning into a rant. Okay, we... <sighs> The, phot the photographs are really, really 
frustrating in this because they are just mere descriptions but i i know what has happened because you've just described the moment prior to the photograph being taken and yes there are times where the photographs aren't explained but it's just description upon description upon description i would have much rather an actual photograph being shown so i could become some passive voyeur to the war so i could soak up the actual torment that's going on but instead i'm just having description after description after description and this book is so long it's a boring novel at first i was really excited because what i was promised what i was promised strong women fighting up against the war i was so excited for that and then you realize at chap a part three which is what uh 200 ba, 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 ba. you get to page 275 and realize that's not going to happen okay yes there's a little bit here but it's 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 too late by that point it's too late you've broke my concentration the road is too far but the plot is so weak okay yes her route is the person to identify and establish the shadow king a man called minim who name literally means nothing but he looks so much like Haley Selassie and the emperor has exiled himself he's he's gone he's gone to England to be comfortable so he doesn't have to face the war and Harut is the person that says to him if you are the person to act to become Haley Selassie you will you will be the person to carry this war you will give Hope you will give morale to the Ethiopian people to win this war. And that's all good, but it's Kadane. It's Kadane who actions it. He, he actions it. I know, I know, I know, I know. At the end of this novel, all the women are forgotten about. I know that. I know that. I read every page. But the men are the people who propel this story along. It's, it's, it's not, it didn't promise what it sought out to do. And Mengista lied to me in the first part. So I was so excited. I was ready. I was, I was ready for it. I was like, yes, we need the Wajura. We need to get the Wajura. We need to get the capes. The scene where the women come together to say they will rally behind the men. They will fight for the men. They don't want to nurse the wounded. They don't want to bury the dead. I was like, yes! This is the story I was waiting for. And I waited. And I waited. And I waited four days to where I finished it and thought, oh, that was a waste. This book is like Ethiopia. It's dry. It's dry. It's dry. I wouldn't have been so annoyed had the first part not been so brilliant where because i'm not familiar with the names i was really struggling to figure out is this a man is this a woman and how she's able to spool that out to us was brilliant it was brilliant the violence in this book only in the first part is controlled in such a way that it's engaging without being off putting it's very it draws you in the actual description of the Italians using chemical warfare is, for me, the pinnacle of this novel, where the women see the men literally gasping their last breaths, but it's done so elegantly that it doesn't turn to spectacle and then part two comes along where they're throwing off the ethiopians off the cliff and they're like daedalus icarus let's talk about all these greek texts i'm like no i don't care i don't care you've made it spectacle you made it spectacle and a Tory's photography kind of feeds into them because it becomes more and more prevalent but it's boring it's so Boring. The plot's boring. The ending's lackluster. Okay, let's talk about the writing. The writing is maximalistic, I would say. There's a lot going on. There's a lot that Mengister expects you as a reader to just soak up. And in regards to Ethiopian culture, 
heritage and status, this book is very confusing to points where I wasn't sure if... How do I say it? How do I say it? Okay. I would like to hope that by an end of a novel, I have learned about someone's culture or heritage enough for me to have a springboard to delve in deeper. Whereas with The Shadow King, I feel equally as lost at the beginning as I do at the end. Nothing was kind of explained to me. And maybe Mengister feels as though as a reader, I meant to go out and search that. And I had to do that. I had to do a lot of Googling. I had to do a lot of asking. But I still don't feel as though I fully grasped why she was talking about certain things or why they were being highlighted or why they were being banged on about for like 300 pages. The last 200 pages were such a chore that had this not been on the book along list, I would have given up on it. I would have completely given up. And to say that I finished it just to have, we're all the Shadow King. What is this? If you're looking for like a long, dry, boring read, then by all means, pick this up. Now, if you're looking for an exhilarating, exciting read, read the first part because, oh, now I did buddy read this with Paula from Draw Your Book and I will link her review of this down below. So please do check this out because she was so integral for me to just ask loads of questions because she'd been to Ethiopia and understood some of the cultural aspects that were lost on me. So please do check her out and go subscribe if you're not. So we're all gonna ask, does the Shadow King get the good book drill? No, it does not. This is a four out of 10. So have you read this book? Are you interested? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know down in the comments. Now, if you're really excited about the book along list, please may I remind you that I read this due to my book we're now over 75 people have joined the Discord link down below. Anyone making content on YouTube who's part of the Book of Boy Book Club, I'm making a public playlist. So there's a place for all of us to look back on, a place where all of us can talk and discuss all the Booker long list. Someone in my book club who has a completely different view of this book is Zim Reads. I'm gonna link his video down below as well. Please do check him out. It's brilliant, especially the intro. Whoa, that was amazing. Now, if you're part of the book club, you know the <laughs> next week, oh, <laughs> next week, no one's looking forward to this. We are doing a book spread, a Dangaramgathon, if you will, of all three of Titi Dangaramga's novels in order to get through and get a full understanding of this mournable body. So first one will be Nervous Conditions, the second one will be The Book of Not, and one on YouTube that no one has had a good word to say about it, this mournable body. <sighs> we can get through this, people. We can get through this. So next week, expect three whole reviews from me on these books. Are you excited? Uh, I'm kind of. <laughs> Bye.